Hi, I'm John Edmiston and this is the introduction to the Theology of Technology course. In this introduction we'll look at what this course is about and how you can do this course best and how you can succeed in your assignments and various course expectations. You will of course have received the course syllabus. This is an important document and you should study it carefully. I'm the instructor. My name's John Edmiston. I have a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and Psychology. After that, I did postgraduate studies in Divinity, and I also did a five-year ordination course with the Baptist Theological College in Australia. Uh, my email is digitalopportunities at gmail.com, and my office phone number is 310-783-1510 if you have any questions. I've been in missions for slightly over 30 years, uh, and I've been in cyber missions, that is, using the internet for ministry since 1991, before there was even much of an internet. So I've been on that for over 20 years, and I've put various courses online. I've been an instructor at Fuller Theological Seminary and Asian Theological Seminary, and a few places like that. Now I'm working with City Vision College to develop their Masters in Science, Technology, and Ministry. And this is one of the core courses to that uh, discipline. And we're very happy to have you as a student. Now, this course is called Theology of Technology. And it introduces students to the biblical and theological basis for a Christian theology of technology and to the concepts essential to the reflective life and practice of the Christian technology. In other words, the first part of this course is biblical and theological. I want you to think biblically. I want you to get into the Word of God and you can use programs such as blueletterbible.org or the UVersion uh, or Logos Bible software to help you do that. And I want you to search through for the various topics and various ideas. We'll give you links, we'll give you articles. But I want you to think, firstly, from a ministry perspective, from a biblical and theological perspective. This is a theology course, first and foremost. In this particular subject, you won't be learning a lot about technology or how to do this or how to do that. You'll be thinking theologically, uh, and so we'll be looking at a theology of technology, a applied theology, a practical theology, not so much a systematic theology uh, such as uh, Calvinism or Arminianism or something like that. We'll be concentrating on a particular issue, how technology affects us as believers, and how theology can support our practice as the life and practice of a Christian technologist. If you're in industry, if you're in Silicon Valley, if you're doing tech support for a large missions agency or, or even if you're just working for the government and as a database administrator, wherever you are, God has something to say about that. And this course will introduce you to some of the central ideas in scripture and in theology that can help you to reflect and to think about how to be a Christian in today's world of technology. Objectives. These are the objectives for the course. There are five of them. They're each important. And I want you to, as I go through this, I want you to think about how you're going to bring these objectives into your study plan as you do this course. Our first objective is to reflectively apply a coherent biblical and theological view of technology to a range of present and emerging ministry situations. A present ministry situation would be something like how technology can be used to help the outreach of a local church. An emerging ministry situation will be where ministry will be in a few years' time as a result of technology, as the result of the emergence of mobile, the result of the emergence of augmented reality, and the result of the emergence of very large databases. So we want to look at it coherently. We want to look at it in a way where we bring the various threads of thought together using a biblical and theological matrix to hold it all together. So we can see where technology fits in God's plan. God's plan of creation, redemption, the fall, the ethical issues involved, the issues of reaching out to the gospel, the issues of building community, the issues of Christian relationships. Our second objective is to clearly evaluate, articulate and address the ethical dilemmas involved in the use of technology. Is technology good or evil? Does it matter how technology is used? Is technology neutral or does technology have a subtle effect on us, affecting our relationships, affecting the way we think, 
affecting the way we view things and affect, affecting the way we expect things. An amusing incident the other day was when someone rang me up and I'm a pastor and I do pastoral counselling. And this woman said to, was complaining to me that she wanted a husband immediately. Uh, and I said, well, you know, explain to her that this would take some time, that to, well, I thought there were people attracted to her and she just needed to take her time, pray about it, and, and uh, in a year's time, God would have probably provided her with a husband. But this didn't suit her. Uh, and she said to me, no, I want a husband now. And I said to her, no, you just can't go shopping and go and pick up a husband, put him in the shopping cart and bring him home. And she said, why not? That's what I want. And she expected to be immediately go out, like clicking on a, something in Amazon and put it in the shopping cart and that item would be a husband. Uh, and so technology has, has shaped us into an expectation of a world where everything is instantaneous. And God's processes and God's time may be different from that in your life and in my life and even in the growth of the church. So how does technology shape us? Does it create ethical dilemmas in our lives? And how do we use it ethically to build up God's kingdom? Our third objective for this course is to understand and articulate your unique identity as a technologist and the unique role played by technologists in the body of Christ. Technology is a wonderful thing and it can help spread the gospel around the world. Radio, TV, the printing press and the internet have shared the gospel with millions and millions of people. And so, as a Christian technologist, we can be part of the Great Commission. We can be part of church growth. We can be part of providing answers to people who are in hurting situations. So, how does a technologist play a role in the church? Do we expect to have a, a chief information officer of a megachurch? Uh, how do we fit into the body of Christ? How do we work with a missions agency? And how does God gift a technologist, such as Bezalel, the person that built the Ark of the Covenant, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost and gave him skill in every sort of metalwork and woodwork. So God blessed technologists and even Jesus was a carpenter. So being a Christian technologist is not less than being a pastor or being a bishop or being a, a missionary of some sort. So how is that unique identity of being a Christian technologist worked out? And if you're in Silicon Valley or some place like that, how do you operate in the corporate culture? Point four, to demonstrate a grasp of the biblical history of technology and how it shapes both human consciousness and social and cultural practices, including both true and false worship, idolatry and true spiritual imagination. Technology can become idolatrous. It can be something that's worshipped instead of the creator. Technology can also uh, evolve throughout history and it can shape the societies that use that technology. And if you look around in the study of anthropology, we talk about the artifacts of a culture uh, and how those artifacts influence relationships, how an aqueduct uh, and roads uh, shape the Roman Empire, uh, and how these, these technologies shape our consciousness and our consciousness of our, our communities and of ourselves, so that the people see now technology as being part of themselves. The cell phone is almost an extension of their own body or their own personality. So. We want to grasp how technology has grown throughout time, and particularly grown and was used in biblical times, uh, and how it influences our social and cultural practices. And in point five, uh, our objective is to communicate a clear vision for the use of technology in areas such as the development of Christian character, spiritual values, and service to the urban poor. Tech Mission, which is uh, the parent organization of City Vision College, is an urban ministry. It deals with uh, inner city issues, addiction issues, uh, issues common to the urban environment. So that's why we put the urban poor there. I'm also involved with networks uh, that work in the urban slums of Asia. And technology is an important part of their identity. Often the only way that they can get important information is through text or through various uh, mobile media. Because they're not going to own a computer. Uh, but they will have a cell phone and they will access the internet at an internet cafe or something like that. And so we can find that the use of technology to help share the gospel, to help disciple people for online courses and online education and the things of God, uh, the impartation of spiritual values and even the development of those spiritual values in, in, in various scenarios that can be set up online. So we want to communicate a vision for the use of technology that is positive and is powerful. 
And so they're the five objectives of this course. Uh, think them over as we do this Theology of Technology course. Now, here's some of my expectations as a lecturer. Firstly, this course requires extensive engagement with the readings, with myself, the instructor, and with other students. We want you to communicate. We want you to get into the various readings online and offline and in your textbooks and we want you to engage with that at a very personal level. I want to see that you've read the materials, that you've thought about the materials and you've processed them some way so that they have become individual to you. Also, we want to see those ideas fleshed out and discussed in community. Now, this course is fairly intense. All City Vision courses are very fast paced so that you can get through them quickly online. So each week is packed with information. We don't string things out, we expect you to keep up. And so careful pacing and scheduling will be required. And it's the task of the student to keep up with the work. I'm not going to prod you. Uh, you have to be disciplined. You have to set uh, time to read the pages of the textbooks and to go through the various links and readings required. There is not too much work in this course, but it does require some discipline. Thirdly, you're going to need the proper equipment. You're going to need good high-speed internet access and word processing software such as Microsoft Word or OpenOffice in order to uh, submit assignments. You'll be submitting assignments in a uh, system called Moodle and you'll do two things. You'll, firstly, you'll put it in the Dropbox within Moodle so it comes to me that way. You'll also email it to me as a backup. So if one system fails, we get it the other way and the uh, Dropbox will timestamp your assignment so we'll know when it's handed in and uh, also your email will act as a backup uh, to that as well because in this technological world you never know what's going to go wrong. Uh, you are expected to maintain your own computer equipment, uh, to have uh, your laptop or your desktop in working order so you can submit your assignments on time. You'll be expected also to have a basic working understanding of digital technology and the internet. Uh, you need to know what uh, the internet is, how it works. Uh, you need to have some grasp of digital technology. Otherwise, this course is just going to be very confusing to you. So this basic working knowledge is prior. We're not going to teach you anything technological in the theology of technology subject itself, uh, but we expect you to have a basic grasp of these things. Uh, fifthly, of course, uh, our expectation is that all posting in forums, because there's going to be a lot of online discussion, will be done in a spirit of Christian love, though vigorous debate is encouraged. No flaming, no spam. You know the rules. You've been there before. You've done that. Uh, so just make sure that uh, you're very uh, careful about what you say. But we do want you to be vigorous and to put your thoughts out there and to be a strong-minded academic. This is a master's subject. Uh, we want to see that you're doing original thinking. Second batch of expectations is number six here. The, this course is meant to challenge your intellectual and spiritual boundaries. And you are not expected to agree with all the materials presented, but rather to interact with the materials in a scholarly manner as reflective practitioners. A reflective practitioner is someone who does things and then thinks about them. So you get into practice, you get into your technology, and then you think about what you're doing and you reflect on it and try and improve it. So you think, then you act, then you think, then you act in a circle uh, as a reflective uh, practitioner. Uh, and you go over constantly trying to improve your work. So well, I am trying to stretch your intellectual and spiritual boundaries. There'll be readings from Christians and non-Christians. There'll be readings from Catholics and Protestants. There'll be readings from all over the place and you're not expected to agree with them all. They're ideas that will push your boundaries and stretch you. Some of them are quite extreme, such as the things from Ray Kurzweil. So uh, I deliberately put provocative material in courses because I want you to be provoked. I want you to be challenged and some of the material that is from non-Christian sources, I want you to answer it back. I want you to say, no, this guy's wrong or this guy's a crackpot. Uh, and, and press back on that uh, and show where your Christian values are coming from because we've got to be able to argue our values in the marketplace. If you're working for a large corporation, there's no use just going around saying, the Bible says, because they don't listen to that. You've got to show why in a strong manner this is right or this is wrong. Uh, and so I'm presenting with you 
presenting you with some challenges and I want you to rise to those challenges because this is a master's subject it's not just regurgitate uh, it's interact challenge think reflect create kind of a course seventhly and fairly obviously this is a theology course so your posts and assignments should take on a theological tone not a devotional tone or a pur purely secular analysis and what do I mean by that by not a devotional tone I mean don't preach at me please I don't want your last Sunday sermon to appear in one of your assignments. I want you to show a scholarly, reflective, analytical approach. Please don't give me something out of Matthew Henry's commentary or something like that. Uh, I want you to, to process this material in a strong, analytic way, uh, just as you would get in a theology textbook. Uh, on the other hand, I don't want a purely secular analysis. I don't want something that's just gushy about... Uh, this technology is wonderful and that technology is wonderful without any reflections about God or the Holy Spirit or the role of Christ in this uh, scenario. We're there to be biblical. We're there to uh, reference the Word of God. We're there to glorify Jesus Christ. So we want to glorify Jesus Christ, but not in a schmaltzy, sentimental kind of way. We want to tackle the difficult issues of technology, but from a Christian perspective. And we want to think in a kind of theological way and in the syllabus I've given some links to some terms and definitions for those of you who don't have a theological background uh, you'll be able to get up to speed uh, I'm not going to be too punishing about this but it is a theology course and I want you to think theologically also I want things to be well supported with references from biblical or other theological sources so uh, I don't want just bland opinion that's not, not supported by a footnote or a reference I'm pretty strong on uh, striking out unsupported opinions. I want to see that there's a reference to what you are saying. So either a biblical reference or a theological reference, something that shows that you've read the books or that you've read the Bible or you've read a theological source and you can back up what you are saying. So I want everything referenced, everything backed up. Now, your major written work and your assignments is expected to reference and to interact with the required texts, the three main required texts plus the scriptures, uh, and at least six of the recommended texts to some extent, and also to reference the class readings, the videos, the MP3s, uh, and things like that. I want to show that you've actually learned something from the course, that you're not just regurgitating stuff that you learned even before you got to this course. So I want to see that you're reading the readings that are in the course, that you're reading the books that are in the course, and that you've reflected upon them in an adequate way, uh, and that you've digested them, and that you've, you know, that you've come to your own reflections and thoughts about the theology of technology. Now, for, uh, for those without a theological background, I have to define what practical theology is, because this is a theology course. This course is classified mainly as a course in practical theology with a little bit of reference to systematic theology. Practical theology is the practical application of theology to everyday life. And a chap called Richard Osma explains that the four key questions of practical theology are what's going on here? Uh, what's going on in society? What's going on in the internet? What's going on in the development of technology? What's, uh, what's happening in this technological space? And that's what we call the descriptive and empirical task, observing what's going on. Then asking, why is it going on? The interpretation of technology. Is technology such, uh, is it alienating us? Is it bringing us closer to God? Is God using this technology to share the gospel? Why is technology there in the first place? Why is it going on? Uh, and why is technology having this influence on our society? Then we ask, what ought to be going on? That's the normative task. What's the norm? So, for instance, we, we look at, uh, at uh, email and we find that something like 80% of email is spam. Well, that ought not to be going on. So we say, well, spam is outside the normative things. It's junk. It's, it shouldn't be there. Why is it there? Why are people trying to use email as an exploitative tool, uh, as, as a, merely as a marketing tool for rubbish? Uh, but the, on the other hand, you have things like pornography, which is clearly uh, uh, has some uh, very detrimental value gambling sites etc but then we then we get into more subtle things what's in, inside the normative or not outside is Facebook addi addiction uh, a normative or non normative thing uh, what ought to be going on how should we be building friends in cyberspace what should those relationships look like 
what should cyber dating relationships look like and things like that and how can we respond how can we bring Christ's perspective into the technological space how can we respond uh, to build relationships share the gospel make people into saints of God through the use of technology what, how, what should our response be to the situation we see with the use and abuse of technology uh, for all sorts of different purposes in society today so we're asking those four questions what's going on why is it going on what ought to be going on and how can we respond into that space and those are the questions we'll be expecting you to ask as you think through this material in this course. And these questions should form the basis of your reflection in the forums and on your writing tasks. So write those questions down uh, as you see them on the screen here on this PowerPoint uh, and uh, think about them and start your brain uh, chugging along. Now, there are three main textbooks plus the Bible. We go to the Bible first. For the, the Bible, I ask you to stick to a literal version of the Bible, such as the New King James Version, New Revised Standard Version, New American Standard Bible, or any other fairly literal Bible. Please don't use uh, things such as the Message, uh, and uh, don't use uh, certainly Jehovah's Witness translations or other uh, translations that are in error. Try and stick to ones, uh, even NIV is generally okay, but it has some passages that are a bit uh, airbrushed but uh, stick to the more literal translations of the Bible the more scholarly translations as, as they better support your case for a scholarly exegesis uh, you can go to biblegateway.com or blue letter Bible to see a vast range of translations uh, and so look through those uh, and stick to those as they, they will better support your case uh, in a theological way now going hopping to the top of the list John Dyer is a friend of mine. He's written a book, From the Garden to the City, The Redeeming and Corrupting Power of Technology. Uh, he works as the webmaster tech guru at Dallas Theological Seminary. And he's written a very clear uh, and wonderfully persuasive book uh, outlining a theology of technology. And I'm sure you will enjoy it. It's one, going to be one of the main books. And we'll also have some interviews with John Dyer uh, scattered throughout this course. Uh, Dawson and Cowan's book, Religion Online, Find, Finding Faith of the Internet, uh, is a very uh, widely ranging book. It uh, has more of a mainstream theological perspective to it. Uh, and uh, you, it's, a, it's a collection of things written in 2004, but still quite relevant today. Then we have Tim Challies, the next story, Life and Faith After the Digital Explosion. Uh, and that's from a more sort of a modern kind of a perspective you can get that on Kindle uh, I think I got it for a very reasonable price on Kindle I recommend Kindle for you to get it if you you can get the Kindle device but you can also just get Kindle for your PC or Kindle for your Apple device I think uh, and you can read the books without having to buy the actual Kindle Fire or, or the or the Kindle 3G wireless or whatever the device is so you can uh, read uh, Kindle devices on a, most smartphones, uh, nearly all computers, and so it's a good way to read things. And as far as possible, I try and find free Kindle books so that you don't come up with any expense. Uh, and so uh, that is a, it's a good book. It's very well written, and I think you'll find that a, quite a challenging book. Uh, it will present you with many challenges to your own thinking. So they're the books that we'll mainly be looking at as well as a lot of alternative readings and you can select from the alternative readings uh, and do those. So that's just getting your toes pointed to this course. We'll do some other videos. That should get you underway. I hope that God blesses you as you study this course. And again, feel free to email me with any questions you have. Digitalopportunities at gmail.com This is John Edmondson signing out. God bless. Enjoy this course.